Good afternoon. Today our discussion would be on causal inference in epidemiology. Included in this lecture would be discussing levels of causality, definitions, Cox postulates, Hill's criteria, Susser's criteria. And it relates to exposures which may cause or be risk factors or independent variables to different outcomes which would be the result of effects, diseases, injuries, disabilities, deaths, dependence. And we learn statistical association versus biological causation and know the cost-effect relationships of things. So these are the levels and types of causality. It could be molecular or physiological, personal and social, deterministic or probabilistic, and what aspect of the environment, if removed or altered, would reduce outcome and burden of disease. So first we go into the definition. Deduction is the recent argument proceeding from the general to the particular. Induction is any method of logical analysis that proceeds from the particular to the general. It brings about bright ideas, breakthroughs, and ordinary statistical inference belong to the realm of induction. Then we have an induction period. It's the period required for a specific cause to produce the disease and usually this is longer with non-communicable disease. Then we have association or relationship. This is statistical dependence between two or more events, characteristics, or variables. Positive association implies a direct relationship while negative association implies an inverse relationship. The presence of a statistical association alone does not necessarily imply a causal relationship. Causality. This is either causation or a cause-effect relationship. It relates causes to the effects as they are produced. Cause an event condition, characteristic, which may play an important role or change in occurrence to the outcome. And causes may be genetic and or environmental. Deterministic causality causes closely related to effect as in necessary sufficient causes. Necessary cause must always precede the effect and this effect need not be the sole result of the one cause. Sufficient cause, it inevitably initiates or produces an effect, includes component causes. So any given cause may be necessary, it may be sufficient, but it could either be both. Component causes, together they constitute a sufficient cause for the outcome in question. This may include the biological agent as well as environmental conditions. In NCDs, this may include a whole range of genetic, environmental, as well as personal, psychosocial, behavioral characteristics. Probabilistic causality. In epidemiology, most associations are rather weak relationship between high serum, cholesterol, and IHT, which is neither necessary nor sufficient. Multiple causes result in what is known as web of causation or chain of causation, which is very common for MCBs. Effect measures as to impact fractions. Effect measures and impact fractions are closely related to the strength of association. The higher effect measures and population attributable risk, the more the exposure is predictive of the outcome in question. So example of necessary cause. So if outcomes are defining in terms of causes, 
the cause is necessary by definition. For example, the tubercle bacillus is necessary for tuberculosis by the definition of tuberculosis. Etiologic classification of diseases often produce necessary causes. So, hepatitis B once looked to be a necessary cause of hepatocellular carcinoma, but now we see that hepatitis C may produce it also. So, for example, for the tuberculosis bacillus and tuberculosis, has exposure? Yes. Does not have exposure? No. And free of disease? Yes. So, it is a necessary exposure. Sufficient cause example. Sufficient causes are very rare in medicine because it is exceptional that one exposure is by itself enough to cause disease. Usually, exposures are much more common than the diseases they cause. Only about 5% of people who smoke get lung cancer. The measles virus virtually almost always causes people to get clinical measles and rabies infection is always fatal. So for example, for sufficient cause with relation to exposure has disease? Yes. Yes. Free of disease? No. And yes. So we see the difference between necessary and sufficient causes. Another example would be HIV, once be classified as both necessary and sufficient cause of AIDS. Now, however, it may be the one that can be infected with HIV and never get AIDS, either because of rare genetic protection or because of treatment of the virus. So, both necessary and sufficient. So, HIV and AIDS in the past has exposure, has disease, all, but free of disease, none. Does not have exposure, none, but all would be free from disease. So, we go back to definitions. We have our predisposing factors. These are factors that prepare, sensitize, condition, or otherwise create a situation so that the host tends to react in a specific fashion to a disease agent. Personal interaction, environmental stimulus, or specific incentive. Examples are age, sex, marital status, and family size. Precipitating factors. Those associated with the definitive onset of a disease, illness incident, behavioral response, or course of action, examples of which would be exposure to specific disease, amount or level of an infectious agent, drug, physical trauma, interaction, and occupational stimulus. And we weigh evidence. At the individual level, clinical judgment may be used. At population level, epidemiological judgment is used. So, when weighing evidence from epidemiological studies, we use causal criteria to deal with confounding, which we will discuss in the later slides. So, these are the Cox postulates. Four postulates should be met before a causal relationship can be accepted between a particular bacterial parasite and the disease in question. These are... The patient agent must be shown to be present in every case, must not be found in cases of other diseases. Once isolated, the agent must be capable of reproducing the disease in experimental animals, and the agent must be recovered from the experimental disease produced. Health criteria, on the other hand, based its criteria on consistency, on replication, strength of association, specificity, dose response relationship, temporal relationship, biological plausibility, coherence, and experiment. So, what is consistency? It's the same association found in many studies. So, hundreds of studies have shown that smoking and lung cancer are associated. 
and no serious study has failed to show this association. But whether oral contraceptives are associated with breast cancer is uncertain because some studies show an association but others do not. So meta-analysis is a good method for testing cons consistency. It summarizes odds ratios from various studies which exclude bias, which we have studied in the previous lecture slides. Consistency could either mean exact replication or replication under similar circumstances. Strength of association, heavy smoking is associated with a 20-fold higher rate of lung cancer and double the rate of coronary heart disease. The association of smoking with lung cancer is therefore stronger than the association with heart disease. The stronger the association, the more likely it is to be truly causal. Expressions of strength of association. Quantitatively, effect measure away from unity and p-value less than 0.05 and qualitatively accept alternative hypothesis so that you could reject your null hypothesis. Dose response relationship. If a regular gradient of disease risk is found to parallel a gradient, its exposure, cancer at a rate intermediate between non smoker and heavy smokers, the likelihood of a causal relationship is enhanced. Dose response is generally thought of as a subcategory of strength. However, dose response is not relevant to all exposure disease relationships because disease sometimes only occurs above a fixed threshold of exposure and thus a dose-response relationship need not be seen. So for example, studies have shown an inverse relationship between a person's blood pressure and a person's serum calcium, but which is the cause and which is the effect? Time order can also be uncertain when disease has a long latent period and when the exposure may also represent a long duration of effect. Examples Low serum cholesterol has been linked to increased risk of colon cancer in prospective cohort studies. But is a low serum cholesterol a cause of colon cancer or does an early phase of colon cancer cause low cholesterol levels. Specificity of outcome. Asbestos causes a specific lung disease asbestosis, distinguishable from many other lung diseases. But low-level lead exposure is associated with lower IQ rather than distinguishable brain syndrome. Thus, Lead is more uncertain as a cause because of possible confounding with other causes of this rather non-specific effect, low IQ. So example, which diseases is benzene more likely to be a cause of? So you will see that works with benzene. Three. Increased risk would be low SES. Coherence. Theoretical is compatible with pre-existing theory. Factual, it's compatible with pre-existing knowledge. Biological, compatible with current biological knowledge from other species. And statistical, compatible with a reasonable statistic model. For example, Presence of a serological marker of hepatitis B infection is associated with greatly elevated rates of liver cancer. That hepatitis B infection is a true cause of liver cancer is also supported by the finding of the viral genome in many liver cancers. By contrast, reserpine was thought to be a cause of breast cancer based on some studies done in the early 70s but there was no other supporting biological information or any truly plausible biological mechanism. Subsequent larger studies failed to support this association. 
Sasser's criteria use similar criteria to judge causal relationships. So this is in agreement with the previous authors who mentioned that two criteria have to be present for any association that has a claim to be causal. Time, order, and direction. Rejection of a hypothesis can be accomplished with confidence by only three criteria. Time, order, consistency, and factual incompatibility or incoherence. Acceptance or information can be achieved by only four. Strength, consistency, predictive performance, and statistical coherence in the form of regular exposure effect relation. And this is comparison of causal criteria using Sussers and the Hill criteria. So time orders, important, strength, consistency, specificity, and coherence. Thank you for listening to this lecture. Please subscribe to our channel for more lectures on preventive medicine and community health.